testing the coffee giants. I can't believe that. Prepare for some sugar shock. This should be just two teaspoons in a double-double, but it's not. Not just coffee, smoothies and tea drinks, too. So one, three, six. You're getting about six teaspoons of sugar. Sorry, six? Six. In that size? And that makes it really difficult to make a more nutritious choice. This is where I think Canadians are being misled. We're cruising for a caffeine fix. Thank you for choosing Jim Hortons, let me help you. At some of our favorite coffee shops. Tim Hortons, McDonald's McCafe, and Starbucks. We're on the lookout for sugar in some of our frothy favorites. Even those you might not expect to be so sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To get the scoop on what we're sipping, I'm heading to the CBC to meet up with two sugar specialists. Registered dietitian Stefania Palmieri and Dr. Sapria Joshi, a liver specialist and gastroenterologist. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. We came with drinks. Yes, we did. They say the amount of sugar in some of these drinks is anything but sweet. I think it's easy for people to overdo it with drinks, having no idea how many spoons of sugar are in that one drink. So just how much sugar are we talking about? It's coffee time. First up, Tim Hortons and Sugar Shock number one, a Canadian classic. Could I please have one medium double-double? The medium double-double. There you go. Perfect, thank you. So, Supriya. Double, double. Two teaspoons of sugar, two teaspoons of cream, right? I wish that was the case, but not at all. And this is where I think Canadians are being misled. Wait, what? Break down the sugar for me. What is actually in here? So as the name implies, it should be just two teaspoons in a double, double, but it's not. There's 21 grams of sugar. Here's what that looks like in teaspoons. One, two, three, four. Plus about another teaspoon from the cream. That's how much sugar is in one double-double. A medium double-double from Tim Hortons is calorie-wise and sugar-wise closely to a 50-gram care milk bar. So when you put it in perspective in that sense of you're having a chocolate bar on your drive into work every morning, then that might shift perspective. So if you were to drink a medium double-double every day, over a year. How much sugar would we be talking about? That would translate to about four of the two kilo bags of sugar a year, just from in your beverage alone. I can't believe that. And get this, a large double-double has even more. It's got a total of 27 grams of sugar, almost seven teaspoons. We're heading to the sweetest spot in Toronto, Sugar Beach, to share the bitter news. How many teaspoons of sugar do you think are in the double-double? The name itself implies two, like two cream, two sugar. Yep. So two teaspoons? What do you think? Probably around two. I was thinking four. Four, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you're right. Four teaspoons. What? Oh, I believe that. I would. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a lot. Plus, there's more sugar when you consider the cream. Really? I don't take any sugar in my coffee usually, but that's uh -huh. shocking. Are we just addicted to sweet? I think so. I think people are addicted to sweet and it's leading to a healthcare crisis. We can't ignore the fact that two thirds of adult Canadians are either overweight or suffer from obesity. We asked Tim Hortons why their medium double-double has more sugar than some folks think. They say the amount of dairy and sugar added depends on the size. So a double-double will taste the same no matter what size you get. If you're looking to shrink your sugar intake, Stefania says you can always shrink the portion and ask for less sugar. A small, regular coffee at Tim Hortons would have one cream, one sugar, and that actually translates to eight grams of sugar, which is a true two teaspoons. Could I have one medium iced cap light? Next up, an iced cap light. It's sugar shock number two. Now, Stefania, ice cap light, that sounds like it should be a healthier option, right? So I think a lot of people think light means fewer calories, means better for me. 
But what I always encourage people to think of is food isn't just calories. We eat food for more than those reasons. We want to look at the protein, the carb, the fat content, the fiber, and the sugar content. So we know a beverage like this isn't going to have any protein or fiber per se, but it will have quite a bit of sugar. I see on the menu here, you have an iced cap light and an iced cappuccino. What's the difference? Uh, the iced cap is made with cream and the light is made with milk. A medium iced cap light has 40% fewer calories than a regular iced cap, but it has the same amount of sugar. We're gonna get the bigger bowl for the iced cap light. One, five, nine. Over nine teaspoons of sugar. That is 39 grams, the same amount as the regular iced cap, and the same amount as a can of Coke. People associate light with fewer calories, hopefully less sugar, mm -hmm. not actually knowing that that's relatively unchanged. If the only thing you change as part of that ingredient mix is the cream, all you're really changing is the fat content. Our next stop, Starbucks. Could I have a grande matcha green tea latte, please? It sounds healthy, but this matcha green tea latte is sugar shock number three. What do you think when you hear matcha green tea? Definitely on the healthier side. Healthy? <laughs> sweet? He said healthy, yeah. she said sweet. Oh, the green tea. The matcha green tea latte is made with something called matcha powder. Correct. And while matcha powder is simply powdered green tea, Starbucks adds sugar to its matcha latte, unless you ask for it to come unsweetened. And that makes it really difficult to make a, a more nutritious choice. So let's do a little more measuring because, you know, we like to do that. So one, three, six, seven. Wow. People know matcha is, you know, in, in line with what should be a good health change, but it's been affected negatively by the sugar added to it. You're getting about six teaspoons of sugar in Whoa. here. Whoa. Sorry, six? Six. In that size? Six teaspoons of sugar. Not surprised. Are you surprised? I'm surprised, yeah. I never really thought about it, but yeah. Stefania's suggestion for a smart swap? If someone's looking to have matcha or a green tea for its health properties, just to have a plain green tea itself. Tea is the most beloved beverage in the UK. So we're off to London. Well, virtually, anyway. Can you hear me better now? Is that okay? Yeah. To meet an expert who says that while a spoonful of sugar might help the medicine go down, there's just far too many in most drinks at coffee shops. So what is available seems to be predominantly options that are not particularly healthy. Um, and I think there is a lot of scope for companies to do better. Kothar Hashem is with a group called Action on Sugar. They rank drinks in popular chains in the UK based on the amount of sugar they have. People just don't know that actually they contain such staggering levels. Uh, and the reason they don't know is because that kind of labeling is not available in the outlets itself. So what about drinks here in Canada? May I have a grande caramel frappuccino, please? Time for sugar shock number four, a Starbucks grande caramel frappuccino. How much sugar is in here? One, this is gonna really take a while. Oh my gosh, six. 13, 13 teaspoons. It's like dessert in a glass. Wow. Yep, it has 54 grams of sugar in Canada, but the same drink in the UK has less, 49 grams. In fact, all the Starbucks Frappuccinos we could compare have less sugar in the UK than in Canada. Kothar says that could be thanks to a voluntary program created by the UK government. Some food and beverage companies, like Starbucks, have pledged to reduce sugar there by 20%. We have a, the government program to voluntarily get companies to reduce the amount of sugar, not just in these types of drinks, but in many different kinds of products that they sold that contain sugar. As for sugary soft drinks, companies have to put their money where your mouth is. Manufacturers have to pay a levy to the UK government if they don't want to reduce the amount of sugar in their pot. We've seen a reduction of about 35% uh, in sugar sold through soft drinks, through the soft drinks that have been subject to the levy. So it works. It totally works. It's a fee for companies, not consumers. 
Do you think that that sugar levy should be applied further to include sugary coffee drinks? Yes, we do think so. We asked Starbucks about the sugar in their drinks. They say customers can customize many drinks by having them sweetened to their preference. A smart swap from Stefania if you're at Starbucks. Try an unsweetened iced latte okay. in a grande, which does reduce the added sugar content and the calories significantly. Up next, McDonald's. One, eight, 14. Almost there. <gasps> oh my God. Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter, cbc.ca slash marketplace. This is your Marketplace. We're searching for sugar shocks at coffee chains. Drinks that seem healthy but have more sugar than you might expect. I want some McDonald's that can I get for you? Hello, could I please have a medium mango pineapple real fruit smoothie? Ours is without yogurt. Thank you. And this smoothie from Mick Cafe is sugar shock number five. So this smoothie I think would surprise many in that there isn't necessarily a very high fiber content because the base of the drink is a fruit juice concentrate. Okay, hold on a minute. This is literally called the real fruit smoothie and you just talked about fruit concentrate. So what's the difference? So the goal of eating fruit is because of the benefits of the fiber and the nutrients that are usually in the skins and the pulp. So to have a product with fruit juice concentrate that's devoid of those nutrients really doesn't serve us anymore. So fruit juice concentrate is not the same thing as eating a piece of real fruit. Correct. Okay. As for the sugar. One, 10. Keep going. Mick Cafe's online nutritional info says this medium-sized mango pineapple smoothie has 57 grams of sugar, which is about 14 teaspoons. 14 teaspoons of sugar. What? Wow. That's like half the cup. Oh, goodness. Really? Holy cow. Oh my God. I'm wondering how much sugar is in this now. A tip from our experts for a healthier smoothie make your own at home with whole fruit in a blender. But keep an eye on the amount. Lay out all the things that you would want to put into your smoothie, and if you can't actually eat all of that at one setting, then that's too much. Okay. The sugar seems supersized in our next drink, Sugar Shock number six from McCafe. And a vanilla chai ice frappe. Thank you. You too. Vanilla and chai, I find people that I've spoken to consider those natural ingredients or natural flavors. And usually anything with a natural connotation is seen as positive, right. but not necessarily so. This medium vanilla chai iced frappe is the biggest sugar shock out of all the drinks we bought. One, eight, 14. Almost there. It has 79 grams of sugar, which is a whopping 19 teaspoons. 19 teaspoons. This would translate to, from a calorie and a sugar standpoint, two cups of a caramel praline ice cream. So this is more like a milkshake. Correct. 19 teaspoons of sugar. Oh my God. Oh my. That's awful. Are they being made to show that on the packaging? You can no. find it on the website. That's where we found it. People don't look at the website when they go to buy a drink on a hot day. Kothar says that's a lot of sugar for just one day. That's only coming from a drink. You know, you're not including the breakfast cereal or the slice of cake or, uh, either, I don't know, the t tomato sauce in your pasta, which also contains sugar. And if you order a large size, it's got 98 grams of sugar. That's the equivalent of almost 25 teaspoons of sugar. You would never put 25 teaspoons of sugar in your tea, in any drink you, you, you make. Right. We ask McDonald's about the sugar in their vanilla chai iced frappe and the mango smoothie, but they have no comment. An alternative, Stefania, for someone who is gonna go through the McDonald's drive-through. So if you like the flavor of vanilla, you could always try a sugar-free vanilla iced coffee, okay. which essentially they will sweeten with a sugar substitute. Turns out you might be getting sugar in your iced coffee even when you don't expect it. Could I please have a medium iced coffee? 
And does that come with sugar already in it? Yes. Okay, how much? Uh, for a medium, it's three pounds. Does the medium iced coffee already have sugar in it? Three pumps. Three pumps. Okay. It got four pumps uh, in a grande. Four pumps in a grande. At all of the chains we checked, the default iced coffees we ordered came with sugar already added, more than two teaspoons. When we went to the chains and ordered iced coffee, uh, at all the places we went to, it actually came with milk and sugar added to it already. Oh, really? Well, I think there is an opportunity for those companies to change the default, to make those default options healthier, more basic, more simpler. Companies do listen to their consumers, uh, and if you're shocked by the amount of sugar and excess calories in the type of drink that you regularly have, then demand better. We ask Health Canada if there's any plans to slap a levy on sugary drinks here. They wouldn't say telling us instead they believe new labeling for sugars and recent changes to the food guide will provide Canadians with the information they need to reduce their sugar intake. It's all about how we perceive a drink or perceive a food and how we categorize it in our minds. I usually look at some of these sweetened drinks as dessert, so treat them as that. If you're usually having dessert on a Friday and a Saturday night, then perhaps instead of a slice of cake or a brownie, you're actually substituting it in for this drink.